Without objection. This week, the National Guard is departing what has been a month-long presence here at the Capitol. Aspects of the Guard's presence here were not fleshed out as clearly or coherently as either Congress or the service members deserved. And members of Congress will continue to discuss and debate whether it is appropriate for uniformed military personnel to play an ongoing role in policing the United States Capitol going forward. But where senators are absolutely 100% united is in our great admiration and appreciation of the individual men and women who volunteered to serve in the National Guard, who put on the uniform, and whose orders brought them here to the Capitol complex. It was my particular honor to get to meet and talk with several groups of the remarkable men and women of the Kentucky National Guard during this period. So thank you all from all 50 states for your patriotism and for your service. Now on a completely different matter, <clears throat> when President Biden's nominees have been qualified and mainstream, they've received bipartisan cooperation. But the President's choice to head a key division at the Department of Justice as an Assistant Attorney General failed to even advance out of the committee. The Democratic leader had to reach into the Judiciary Committee and rescue the nomination of Kristen Clark. Our colleagues on the committee did not give her a favorable recommendation. That's because of a long history of statements that placed the nominee on, frankly, the far left fringe of the political spectrum. If our Democratic colleagues have their way, a couple of days from now, the American people will have an assistant attorney general who argued publicly just last year, quote, we must invest less in police, end quote. She used that exact phrase three times in one essay. Violent crime shot up dramatically in 2020. One survey of 30 plus major American cities found that the murder rate jumped 30% last year alone. Other estimates have found even larger increases. Experts say 2020 saw the largest one-year rise in homicides that America has ever seen, as far back as we have recorded these kinds of statistics. Early data from this year suggests that 2021 may even be worse, but apparently the president's response to this violent crime is to have a proponent of defunding the police help run the Department of Justice. Adequate policing is not an enemy of civil rights. Among other things, a recent study by multiple university professors confirmed that more cops lead to fewer murders. Quote, larger police forces save lives and the lives saved are disproportionately black lives, end quote. Police funding isn't the only important issue where the nominee's judgment has missed the mark. Three years ago, when the then Attorney General was standing up a task force on religious liberty, Ms. Clark said this was designed, quote, <clears throat> to make it easier for people to use religion to mask their discriminatory goals. An incredibly out of touch, far left statement. Finally, we're currently watching an alarming spike in anti-Semitic attacks and violence across our country. I introduced new legislation on Friday with Senator Cotton to confront anti-Semitism head on. But as, the, as a Harvard undergraduate, Ms. Clark invited, welcomed, introduced, and then defended a famously anti-Semitic guest speaker who had authored a book literally entitled, now listen to this, The Jewish Onslaught. The nominee has stated recently that she regrets that decision. Goodness, I would certainly hope so. Yet she also claims that her op-ed from just last year, which asserted three times, three times, that we must invest less in police, was not actually suggesting that we invest less in police. This is not the right nominee for a crucial post at a crucial time. So I would urge colleagues to vote no this week. 
Now, on another matter, last week a bipartisan majority of senators voted to proceed to floor debate about our nation's long-term competition with China. There's no disagreement that the People's Republic strategic capabilities and its growing influence beyond the Indo-Pacific pose a singular challenge to American strength and security. There is robust debate about the right ways to address this challenge. The legislation before us arrived on the floor incomplete, and it spans a number of huge issues that occupy multiple committees' jurisdictions. It's a prime example of a bill that needs a thorough bipartisan amendment process here in the Senate. <clears throat> so far, we've had a few votes on important amendments. There are a lot more that need consideration. And we should not close debate on this bill until those amendments are addressed. Unfortunately, during one important vote last week, our Democrat colleagues sent a telling signal. They voted down Ranking Member Inhofe and Vice Chairman Shelby's amendment to make sure that the real backbone of our competition with China, the resources we allocate to our armed forces and national defense, was not neglected. <coughs> so make no mistake, supply chains, espionage, intellectual property, those are all important topics. But all the policy tweaks in the world would not amount to much help if we lose our military edge with respect to China. Soft power isn't much good without the hard power to back it up. The Chinese Communist Party appears to understand this quite clearly. According to one watchdog, it's increased military investment by 76% over the last decade. China has increased its military spending by 76% over the last decade. The same data show that our own U.S. defense spending fell 10% over that period thanks to the approach of the last Democratic administration, and now President Biden has signaled that he wants to cut defense spending after inflation. Exactly the wrong approach. No serious strategy for our competition with massive foreign powers could leave the U.S. armed forces, their tools, and their resources out of the conversation in a meaningful way. I hope and expect we'll have a number of further votes on important amendments before there would be any attempt to shut off debate on this wide-ranging measure. 